Let us talk about, uh, you said six-year-old. I think she's supposed to be 10. Oh, my goodness. Well, I was just so <laughs> distracted by, by her glory. <laughs> she was awesome. Yeah, let's talk about, uh, you know, we, we've met a lot of other uh, child rulers on Game of Thrones, and usually they've been either awful people or just completely over their head, which is understandable if you're mm -hmm. a kid and you're, like, given all this power. But... Lady Mormont, uh, this seemed to be one of the, you know, introductions that everyone was on board with. I assume that was the same for you. I, yeah, I, it was funny. I, I was a little late to watching the episode, and Jim, who, you know, is is one of our coworkers here at IGN, texted me. He's like, well, I found my new favorite character. And I was like, okay, don't tell me anymore. But then I watched it. I was like, it's it's Leanna Mormont, right? Yeah. And it's funny because her letter to Stannis last season was another one of those moments where it was like, you know, Bear Island knows no king in the north, but uh, that whose name is Stark. I just butchered it. Yeah. But that's the general consensus. And we were like, yeah, girl, get it. Like, if that's mm -hmm. right, you stand by the Starks. And so for two Starks to appear on her doorstep and her to be like, why? Why should we risk our lives for you anymore? We fought with Rob. That didn't work out. Like just taking them to task and just being so in command. I, there was this tweet that was going viral last night that was like, you know, if she had three dragons, this show would have been over two seasons ago. And you get the sense we need we need a few more Mormons in our midst. Yeah, yeah. And it's cool, by the way, you know, because it's like, the, you know, they're, they're talking there about, you know, uh, your uncle, uh, you know, Jon Snow trained under him. Uh, but then, of course, they're not even mentioning Jorah. You know, it's right. like this is a family that has touched upon a lot of different facets of the show. And sometimes it's hard to even keep track of where these people go and how they all, we've never seen them on screen together, right. how they all link up. Uh, she was great. It was just a, such a great scene. Uh, you know, obviously, um, the fact that Davos is the one who sort of connected with her. And clearly, of course, it's like he's he so good with talking with kids. He lost his <laughs> daughter and she's like the same age. But, you know, the, he spoke to her in exactly sort of the right respectful but like understanding way. Uh, yeah, it was it was really cool to see just how forceful she was. And even the fact that uh, in something that was more of a traditional Game of Thrones thing, which is I will stand with you. I also only have 62 guys. Right. But she was just like, I've got 62 guys. Like, you know, <laughs> she, she, she's like, you know, look, like, when, uh, doesn't she say like each of them fights like 10 men or yeah, something Yeah, or like, like, like two men and he's yeah, like, yeah. if they're anything like you. And yeah, it, just, it totally is evocative of uh, Davos's relationship with Shireen. Not yeah. his daughter, but uh, Stannis' oh, sorry, daughter. Yeah, I who, said his daughter. Who, but he was sort of like her surrogate yes, father. Yes. He was the only person who He was the one who was treating her, her like a child. Yeah. Like a, like a, like a, a daughter, yeah. And, and it's, it's sort of a nice moment too because it's with so many other things that happened. I had this moment yesterday where I was thinking about what happened so far this season. I was like, oh yeah, Ruth Bolton like died. Like <laughs> I forgot about <laughs> oh, it. Yeah. That's it. That's far in the rearview mirror. But one big thing that still hasn't been dealt with is Shireen's death. Yeah, it's, and Davos, it's sort of a ticking time bomb. Yeah, yeah, and so I think you know, in a nice, subtle way, this conversation with Leanna Mormont was a little evocative of that and a little reminder, like. Oh, what does this remind me of? Oh, his relationship with Shireen. He still doesn't know that Melisandre kill sacrificed Shireen. So I thought that that worked well. But I honestly, uh, some people were complaining about uh, John and Sansa's quick tour throughout the North to petition for I, support. We've joked but in general this season how people are just jetting through Westeros. But, you know? Yeah, but I, you know, I really liked it, and mm -hmm. I liked to see them having to, you know, humble themselves and and learn the game amongst themselves and and really petition because the Starks, who they are in season six, is not who they were in season one. They are a bro they are broken men and women. They are a broken house, and they need to fight to get the land back. And and so everything about that really worked for me. Yeah, and and also just uh, sort of acknowledge some of the stuff that they talked about even before, and they knew would be an issue. Issue, which is Jon Snow, you know, Lady Mormont brings up. It's like Jon Snow is a bastard. Yeah. And Sansa doesn't she have she has a line about like oh my God. the marriages. Yeah, you know? she's like, You're a Bolton, or are you a Lannister? <laughs> right. And I was like, Right. Yes. <laughs> like, and Sansa, Sansa being like, listen, I did what I did to survive. And she's right. But I was like, I love that they're still yeah. bringing that up. Because that's another season three thing when yeah. in season four when Sansa was married, married to, to Tyrion. Tyrion. Right, right. And it's easy to forget that <laughs> no stuff. No divorces in Westeros. <laughs> no, no prenups. Um, but yeah, so it, it, it was a great scene because it brought up all that. It showed how none of it is easy they ultimately did make an ally of her, and it was like you were just so like, yes, this kid is awesome. And I hope you noticed, too, like she and her maester came with them to their little encampment. So I was like worried for a little bit that that would be all we get of her. It looks like she's at least around being a boss. Like, that's all I want. I, I hope that we get more of her. I hope she continues to live up to it. But I'm saying all these things that mean she's going to die, right? <laughs> right like, it's right. inevitable. Like, right. <laughs> Game of Thrones can't give us that much yeah, that we like. like. Here she is. She saved the day. <laughs> nope. <laughs> I do also want to know like I 
I am waiting for the day that they introduce the Manderleys and they name drop the Manderleys again mm -hmm. in this episode. I want them to go to White Harbor. I just, I want to meet the Manderleys. I'm just putting it out there. Everyone needs to know. I, want, I feel like they're setting it up. I want to meet the Manderleys. Thank <laughs> you.